The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce basic concepts and techniques about 3D visualization and the applications for those people whose forestry operations are in visually sensitive areas. We will be using ArcGIS 10.4 and Google Earth Pro to complete these tasks. First, we will build a product using data from an existing project with layers in ArcMap. This means that you will need certain layers in ArcMap that correspond to your area of interest or AOI. First, you will need a layer that expresses elevation. From the Start menu, go to Programs, find ArcGIS, and open ArcMap. Mine is right here. If you can't find it, ArcGIS might be located in the ESRI directory in your programs. When the ArcMap window opens, select a new blank map. First thing we're going to do with our blank map is go to File, Save As, and save our map in an appropriate place, preferably on a hard drive, because working off of a server with ArcMap will be very slow. Wherever you decide to save it, make sure you save it somewhere permanent and back it up. We'll call this Tutorial Map. Next, we are going to open up Arc Catalog. Our catalog is this yellow tool right here. Mine is already open. Uh, we are going to pin it to your screen. You can pin something by pressing this pin right here and it will stay there and will not move or disappear while you are working in your map. In a folder of your choice, create a file geodatabase. We're going to do that by right clicking on the file, going to new, going to file geodatabase. There are two types of geodatabases, personal geodatabase and file geodatabase. When in doubt, create a file geodatabase. We're going to name it tutorial. Next, we have to add our layers to this geodatabase that we just created. So we are going to add lakes, streams, forest cover. We're going to do this by importing the feature classes corresponding to those attributes into our geodatabase. So we right click, import, feature class. Here we have our feature class to feature class tool open. In input features, we're going to put the feature class that we are importing into our new geodatabase. Here I will add my lakes and wetlands. You just click on the feature class, you drag it into the box. Output location, since we are importing, should be tutorial. It is, that's good. Output feature class, we're going to call it the same thing. Lakes, wetlands. Say okay. Okay, now that that is completed, we can import the rest of our layers. If you want that box to show up when you are importing layers, then you can go to Geoprocessing when this is done loading, Geoprocessing Options, and uncheck the Enable box. And you can see your progress as different tools carry out their functions. However, you can only do one function at a time. So same thing as last time, right click on tutorial, import feature class, import our AOI, our area of interest, we'll call it AOI, say okay, great, close. You, you'll see firstly that all of your layers are showing up in your table of contents over here. If your table of contents isn't showing up, you can click this button right here. This is your table of contents button. I like it pinned over here on the left side of my screen. And these are our layers. This is the area of interest. And these are the lakes and wetlands. And since it takes so long to load them every time, we can just uncheck that box, uncheck that box, and the layers disappear from our view. So we've got our AOI, we've got our lakes and wetlands. Let's do our viewpoints. We'll uncheck that and our elevation data. Now, before we start working with the data, let's make sure that each of the feature classes have the correct projection. Right click on the feature class. Let's go into our tutorial geodatabase. That's what we're working with now. Right click, click properties. And if you're working with data from data BC, they will most likely 
The projection will most likely be in BC Albers, 1983. We'll go to XY coordinate systems, NAD 1983, BC Environment Albers. If it is not, you will have to reproject your layer, which you can do in the toolbox. But this one is in the correct projection, current coordinate system, NAD 1983, BC Environment Albers. Say OK. Okay, and we just want to make sure that everything's in the same projection, the same coordinate system. And they are. Great. If you haven't already, you can make sure all of your features fall within your AOI by clipping the feature classes. First, we are going to click on Geoprocessing, then click on Clip. This is the Clip tool. It will open up. We have our input features. Whenever you're clipping something, your input features are going to be the largest data set, whatever you are trying to make smaller. So let's start with our lakes and wetlands. We can just click and drag it in from the table of contents. You can also click and drag in from the catalog. The clip features is whatever shape we are clipping our lakes and wetlands to, which in this case is our area of interest. Click and drag. And output feature class is where it is going and what it's going to be called. So let's click over here on this picture of the file. We're already in our tutorial geodatabase. We're going to call it lakes, wetlands, clip. Save, press OK. The clip is complete. Say close. And here is our lakes and wetlands clipped to the area of interest. Let's do the same thing for our elevation data. Geoprocessing, clip. Click and drag the elevation into our input features. Clip features is our area of interest. And we will save it in our tutorial geodatabase as elevation clip. Save. Say OK. Great. Now if we check the viewpoints layer, drag it to the top, you'll see that all three of our viewpoints already fall within our area of interest, so we're not going to clip that layer. If you do not have an AOI created, you can make one yourself, and we're going to do this by creating a brand new feature class. So let's right click on our geodatabase that we want the feature class to go in, scroll down to new, and click feature class. We're going to call this feature class area of interest two, because I already have area of interest one. We have to make sure that it is a polygon. If you want to make a line or a point feature class, you can click one of those, but this is a polygon. We're going to say next. Make sure it's in the projection that we want. We're going to keep the projection the same throughout. Next. XY tolerance, you can leave as is. This we can not do anything with. This is our what our attribute table would look like. Um, since the area of interest is really just there, for the shape of the polygon and the information in it isn't all that important. We're just going to leave this again as is. Click finish. To create the polygon, we have to first turn the editor on. Here is the editor toolbar. If your editor toolbar is not here, you go to customize toolbars. Check that. Make sure it's on. Go to editor and say start editing. Make sure that your area of interest is added to your table of contents. We can uncheck the rest of these if we would like to. Go over here to create features. This is how we're going to create the feature. AOI2, make sure it's selected. And we can make polygon, a rectangle, a circle. Let's make circle. And you go over here to your map window. You click and you drag. Double click. There we've made a circle. Let's say we also want to make a rectangle. We can make a rectangle too. When you're done, go to editor. You can save your edits and keep working, or you can say stop editing and it'll prompt you to save. Say yes. And now we can uncheck, check that. Got our clip on here. And that's how you create your own area of interest. If you want it to be perhaps a town or a, a province or something like that, you can download area of interest from data BC as well. If at any time during your process you want to change the colors of your features, you just click on this colored square in the table of contents underneath your layer and you can scroll through these or you can pick one over here. Let's say we want it to be red. Say OK. Now your shapes are red. So let's save our map right now. I am going to remove this area of interest from the screen because we don't need it. I do that by right clicking, 
going remove and you'll see it's still saved over here in our catalog but it is no longer on our map we can exit out of create features our editor is off and we'll just go file save as save yes we'll replace it and our map is saved before we start the next step of creating a 3d tin model triangular irregular networks model we need to turn on 3d analyst in arc map in order to do this we're going to put the bar here the same way that we put the editor bar here we're going to customize toolbars and turn on 3d analyst there it is let's lock it up here if you cannot find 3d analyst in the customized toolbar or if you check it it won't let you use any of the tools you might have to turn on 3d analyst in the extensions which you do here in extensions 3d analyst already checked great close okay now we can remove some of these layers that we don't need anymore so we have our elevation and our wetlands clip so let's remove the original elevation by right clicking and pressing remove and same with lakes, lakes and wetlands and we'll leave our AOI here for now we don't need it but let's create the tin model we're going to go to arc toolbox go to 3d analyst tools open that up open up data management open up tin and double click the tool create tin our input feature class is going to be our elevation clipped to our AOI click and drag that in under our height field, we're going to select whatever variable represents the, or whatever feature represents the elevation, which in this case is grid code. If you don't know what that is for your data, you can go back and check the met metadata and it should tell you which field represents your elevation. Under SF type, we're going to select soft line so that the contours of the elevation model can be softened during our triangulation. Under coordinate system, we're going to select good old NAD 1983 BC Environment Alvers, what we've been using this whole time. Say OK. And we're going to save it in our D drive. We'll call it Tin Tutorial 2. Say OK. And here it is. It should show up right here in your table of contents. And if we want to double check to see if our tin model is about doing what we want it to do, let's zoom in to a low level area. Here we have the lake. Um, if we uncheck it, we'll see underneath it. Let's say you already know the elevation of the lake and you want to make sure your tin came out the proper way. We can check this blue or click on this blue identify feature. And now we have the little eye on our arrow and we click where we know the lake is. And if we know that the lake is at 822 meters, then we know that our tin came out correctly.